Yes, I am listening. I know what you are saying. You are saying, Samita, in your last video you mentioned we need to put color on fabric to make it more interesting. But the big question is how? You can dye your fabric in a single solid color or you can selectively dye parts of the fabric to form a pattern. Now this second technique is called resist dyeing when parts of the fabric resist color when immersed in a dye bath. Common examples of resist dyeing are tie dye, shibori, batik and tritik. In tie dye, you can fold, you can pleat, twist, crumple the fabric to prevent the dye from entering selected parts of the fabric. In batik, patterns are selectively covered with hot wax. In Tritik, the pattern is formed by running small stitches. This technique is widely prevalent in Africa. You can also use mud or starch to cover your patterns. This is a fine example of resist dyeing or resist printing from Rajasthan, India. What can you use to dye your fabric? Well, you could use synthetic dyes fast, easy and bright. The history of synthetic dyes is pretty interesting. William Henry Perkin, an English chemist, was actually looking for a cure to malaria and he stumbled upon the first synthetic dye, a mauve or purple color. Chemical dyes can be acidic basic, azoic, disperse, pigment, reactive and bad dyes. All good so far. Nice and easy, bright and fast color. What's the problem? The problem is many of the chemical dyes including azo dyes have been connected with serious health problems. They also release toxins into the water bodies and air. Yeah. So what's the alternative to chemical dyes? Simple. Dyes we used before William Perkin stumbled upon the first chemical dye. Natural vegetable dyes have been a part of human life since a very long time. Egyptian mummies, remnants from Indus Valley Civilization bear testimony to the use of vegetable dyes. So what's the strongest natural dye in your pantry or in your kitchen garden? Turmeric is probably one of the strongest natural dyes. It gives you a nice strong yellow color. So much so the other day a client of mine asked me, Savita, how do we get rid of a turmeric stain on my t-shirt? And I told her, simply dye the entire garment yellow. Do you have a tip for her? Mention in comments. Beetroot, red cabbage, all kinds of berries, especially blackberry, onion skin, avocado skin. Options are endless. Simply experiment. Tea or coffee. Now if you want your fabric or your laces and trims to have that nice vintage patinated look, soak them in tea or coffee solutions. 
Different kinds of tea will give you different kinds of browns. In fact, chamomile tea gives you a nice peachy color. You can even create lasting memories with your plant-based dyes. I'll give you an example. These beautiful roses were a gift from my other half. The roses are dry now. I'll now use these dry rose petals to dye some of my clothes. Why do we not use vegetable dyes and do away with chemical dyes altogether? Because vegetable dyes are prone to fading. We need to fix vegetable dyes to the fabric with something called a mordant. What is a mordant? A mordant is a binding or a fixing agent. The literal meaning of mordant is to bite. So a mordant helps the color to bite the fabric. So what are these mordants, the fixing agents that I am talking about? There are several choices or options. Number one, you can simmer the fabric in dye bath in a copper vessel. Copper is a natural mordant. Simmer the de-sized or starch-free fabric in water to which vinegar or common salt, even Epsom salt has been added. Alum is another good mordant. Add alum to water and immerse your fabric in the solution. Swish it to release air bubbles Keep it soaked for about 40 to 60 minutes, turning it now and then. I personally have a lifelong love affair with vegetable dyes. I think they are great for adding new items to your wardrobe or for giving a fresh lease of life to your towels, to your t-shirts, anything that's looking a little tired. How to use color to your advantage? Now, if you are like me on the petite side and do not want to look any more petite, stay away from colors like navy, charcoal, gray, and opt for puppy colors, vibrant colors like red, like white, like coral, like purple, and vice versa. Colors like navy, deep forest green, charcoal will have a slimming effect. Colors like yellow draw color from your face. Opt for perhaps a warm tone of yellow, say mustard. Pale colors like beige or gray will make you look washed out. Balance these colors with a pop of bright color. For instance, combine your gray with a pop of red. Next week, where do you think Learn with Samita will be. Learn with Samita will be at Melbourne Fashion Week. Expect to see snippets from runway shows, exhibitions, virtually participate in conferences, seminars and discussions and find out what's new, what's happening in the world of sustainable fashion. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Till next time. Samita signing off. Bye for now.